Uh, okay, hey, uh, so I'm gonna just get started by like, just like practicing, like I have no idea what I'm doing like here because like it's like my third year of teaching, but I've been trying a lot of different things and I'm just reporting back with like some of the different things I've actually tried. So uh, next slide. Um, so when I first started uh, teaching at the school, I was trying to think about like a lot of the different, um, is this the uh, original? This is what was said to me. Yes. Oh, okay. There are a couple of different extra things in there, but it doesn't matter. I can actually just talk really quickly about what was happening. Um, I was trying to find a more intimate environment with my students because I had really, really large class sizes that were uh, not necessarily designed for my school. So my school is 330 kids within it. I was teaching, uh, my class was 130 kids. So I was teaching about a third of the school. Um, so I didn't have enough chairs, I didn't have like, like uh, calculators, all that kind of stuff. I had a lot of fragile mathematicians. And um, I wanted to actually find a way to actually facilitate students uh, actually working with each other because uh, they just weren't really used to having group work and actually talking about math. So uh, the next thing was uh, just some of the barriers within being able to teach stations um, within like about 90% of my instructional time. So if we can go to the next slide. Um, so some of the barriers that I had was just being able to teach just that much like in terms of station time was when I had a co-teacher that didn't know the geometry top content, I didn't know like whether or not I can actually fit the time within uh, the schedule. Um, I didn't know how to actually do any kind of routines or procedures. Um, didn't know how to do grouping, didn't know how I should assess kids after stations. I didn't know how to actually do in learning independence. And I also had this year about 35% of my kids had IEPs. Uh, I had a kid with a visual impairment. I had a kid with an audio impairment. Uh, two or three kids with autism that had dedicated AIDS and a traumatic brain injury, a uh, student with traumatic brain injury. Uh, and at the same time, I also had kids that were above an app at, at an average about four grade levels or above. So like really, really inclusive classroom that I had to figure out how I can differentiate for the low, low, low flyers, but also for the very, very extreme high flyers. So stations was kind of the way that I did it. Um, next slide. Uh, so I started off, I actually kind of went more into an intimate planning process. I was kind of working on this presentation up until like two minutes ago. So this is kind of the old version, sorry. Um, so I actually started off with three stations and those three stations kind of interchanged with each other. So there was a teacher's lounge station where uh, there would be 10 minute mini lessons and like we would use guide notes within that. Um, just in terms of planning difficulty, this was actually kind of like a moderate level because like all of my lessons were already about 10 minutes long and then just an issue of just being able to uh, segment and make sure that I had enough time for my kids to actually work through the guide notes. Um, I also include color markers and also uh, glue sticks in order for kids that are ELL and just basically anybody else to be able to color code with the guide notes at the same time. Um, at the same time, like sometimes I wouldn't be doing any kind of direct instruction, there'd be an application station. So this is where I would actually use a lot of like discovery-based activities that would chunk over multiple days. Or, um, this is the best part, I love this, I was using uh, group quizzes to actually throw quizzes at, and then like what would happen is that they would all have the same quiz, they'd have to discuss, at the end i collect all the papers, pick a random one, and that was everybody's brain and group. They freaked out about that a lot. Um, practice Plaza was kind of like the procedural fluency part that I actually used, and that was a way that I actually was able to include my co-teacher within a lot of the um, station work that I was doing, because like since he didn't really know the content, being able to have that answer key and being able to actually uh, have him work with the procedural stuff was really, really helpful. And then the last one was actually an independent station that was technology-based, and I can talk more about the two platforms I used. Uh, the ones that I used was called IXL, and then there's a Mastery Pathways component if you guys have Canvas at your school that can also come up. Um, so next slide. Um, so this is kind of the timing that I eventually kind of got through with my station. So what happened is that every time a, a kid walks into a classroom, there's kind of a bin where they pick up like some sort of material. And on that one particular piece of paper, there were three completely different exit tickets for each different station. So everybody would just like go to their station, they'd have 15 minutes at that station, then it'd be three minutes for an exit ticket, rotate, 15 minutes to the next station, rotate. And I think like you being able to incorporate an exit ticket, like a mini exit ticket within each station was actually really good in terms of pacing. It really helped with actually being able to force kids to be able to like think about like their time and whether or not they can solve and it also pressured a lot of kids to be able to work together because like towards the end of the year when I kind of built up their capacity for like not being fragile mathematicians, um, they were able to actually, like I on purpose created more work than could be done within 15 minutes, so they really, really had to work together. 
Um, so every station had their own work that you couldn't see. So like what uh, that like um, so basically like it kind of stopped the low uh, the high fires from being able to do all three exit tickets. And be like I'm done, Mr. Ray. Like here's my work and turn it in. Um, so I actually covered up the exit tickets. And then like, I would have photocopies of the actual exit tickets being taped on the, uh, on the desk so that they can complete the work on their own exit ticket paper, but they can only see it at their station. Um, and then um, I, I, I'm really, really a big fan of classroom jobs because I'm incredibly lazy. I actually always got the loudest, rowdiest kid in the classroom to be the time tracker. So like the, this year, uh, the loudest kid was always one that's like, time! And like he would tell kids to be able to rotate. Um, and it was a really great way to include uh, a kid who would not have otherwise felt like they belonged within the classroom. Uh, next slide. Uh, so this is how I actually grouped uh, stations again. So I don't know if this happens within uh, other schools, but in uh, the District of Columbia, every single high school student needs to have 100 community service hours in order to uh, graduate. And uh, what happens is that I just like threaten kids with like community service hours. Well, I bribe kids with community service hours, and I just have like a child like just like print out all these names and stick magnets at the back. And uh, what I would do is like I would just actually throw like uh, magnets on. So in the beginning, it was kind of like great group like based on behavior and like just like which kids can, like are not going to like sit down and next next to each other and start a fight. Um, but then towards the end, like because like there was better like a more of a classroom culture, I just literally took the magnets and I just threw them on the board, um, and then just like kind of like balanced out the groups from there. So like that was how I did random grouping. It was probably not the best word, but whatever. Uh, next slide. Um, the second way I actually kind of like normed stations and made it really, really efficient was I knew that I only had about, I only saw my classes four times a week and every like class was about like 50 minutes long. So like you have like some of the kids like coming in, like you have to grab a ticket, like they need a tissue, can I go to the bathroom, Mr. Ray, blah, blah, blah. So like there's a lot of stuff that needs to be like immediately like kind of like uh, stamped out and like in, in the sake for the sake of time because I just didn't have that much time with them. So um, in the beginning of the year, I like, spent like a lot of time trying to norm uh, what group work looks like, what noise level looks like, how you actually move, like all of those other things. So I had these like little like kind of like janky signs that like are stuck on the bottom of like popsicle sticks. And like in the beginning of the year, they would sit down, they would read over norms like silently for about like a minute, then they would actually get to work. So to, like, it was totally worth the investment though because what happens is that like towards like November and December, the kids just literally walk in, they know exactly where to go, they grab their stuff, and then they just get straight to work. I didn't even have to, I just like kind of just like stood there like kind of like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do my own thing, and they just like did it, which was really, really awesome. Um, some, some of the things that you can see here is like just like accountability. Uh, you're expected to like they like it tells them like exactly what like good group work looks like. And um, I, you had like an on topic math poster, so like it's sort of like if you're stuck, what you're supposed to do. Uh, so you're not just relying on me. And then we also have standards based grading within our school. So like it's in the IXL platform. If you guys have known about that, like it's grade of a, sc a skill of 100. So it's just sort of like if this was not like the exact like, skill that I used for every single score or skill, but like it kind of gave them a way to kind of check and self check what they were doing. Uh, next slide. Oh, that's just my classroom. Um, so like, uh, this is actually a really, really old picture. But like, so like, here is like sort of like the tech cup. I actually kind of arranged it into an L shape so that I could actually see all the kids' screens, so they're not like on like soccer or something like that. Um, this was sort of the teacher's lounge in the middle, as this is where I kind of did a lot of my direct instruction. And then this was actually the practice plaza, is what I called it, uh, and that was building the procedural fluency necessary for the kids. Next slide. Um, so here's like the exit ticket paper, as you can see it. So you can actually see I try to like incorporate different levels of like uh, that require depth. Oh, okay, I'm moving fast. That's of knowledge within each of these things. So there's a kind of a procedural one, and then there's an open-ended one. I include a word bank for all of my ELL followers, um, and then I photocopy everything on different pieces of paper so they knew what they were supposed to do. Next slide. Okay, this is how like uh, color coding looks like within my teacher's lounge classroom. If you don't have a surface or like OneNote, like please use it. It is amazing because like what you can do is you can actually just like use a OneNote to actually upload things onto a screen. So like kids who are missing notes can just do that. Next slide. I'm gonna go really really fast. Okay, practice class. Like you already see this. It's just like boring like procedural worksheets. Next slide. Uh, okay, so next slide. This is just a tech hub. I use an uh, ISL platform, but this is the thing I thought was really cool. This is called Mastery Pathways on Canvas, and what what happens that I would actually create all of this material where like kids would start with a pretest, and then based on their score, they would actually be assigned different kinds of assignments to actually help them move on. And this is actually really, really awesome because it actually meant that uh, next slide. 
Uh, when I was, no, no, I don't want that. Next slide. <laughs> this one, okay, so this is actually how I actually for, uh, differentiate writing within my mathematics classroom. So you can actually create a Google Docs uh, worksheet and assign different looks. So this is actually a proof student, so I spent an entire week not even talking about proofs, just like how to reason with a math and argue. And this is how I actually kind of differentiate within that uh, case. So like, write a paragraph proof on algebra, here's the criteria. This is a more advanced one where you're just like given like how to write a paragraph proof, and that's how it worked. Uh, next slide, I'm um, gonna skip that, skip that, uh, skip that. Oh, that was a group quiz. I just wanted to show really quickly how this actually looked like with our students. So at the end of the, uh, I'll, I'll finish really quickly. But at the end of this, uh, I actually asked my kids like, how did you like everything? And like, they really, really liked stations. They, I don't know why they loved diagnosis, but they really, really loved it. Um, and then for some reason, I thought like, because like, there was a lot of complaining about this in the beginning of the year about group quizzes. Um, a lot of kids, what they did was like, there was always that one kid who sat in the station and like just sat there doing nothing and just kind of took the chance that like their quiz wouldn't be picked and then like the rest of the group wouldn't yell at them for it. So what I started doing was called a survivor group quiz. Um, which is basically, I don't know if this is necessarily the best way of doing it, but basically like at the end of the quiz, like you get to like, the group gets to vote to kick someone off of the island. And then, they're, <laughs> and then the, that particular student gets their own particular grade for their own quiz. And that kind of like forced a lot of kids to like, act, instead of just sitting there and like just riding on the coattails of a lot of their students, like they literally had to like, work together because like they didn't want to get kicked off the island. Uh, I like like just like facilitating like math fights within my classroom. Like not math the ones, not like the other ones. So uh, that was basically it. Uh, it's, I don't know if there's another slide, but you can check. Oh yeah, copy up. So uh, sometimes so I still sometimes need a whole group teaching, but I was able to actually like do this for like about 90% of my year um, and just like be station, station, station. So there was a kid at some point who just complained like, why are we all just doing stations in the test and the stations in the test? And I was like, yes, that's exactly what I want. Um, and it really, really facilitate a lot of like really great classroom culture within the classroom. And uh, next slide. Oh yeah, push for next year. Push for next year. Great. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>